Hello everyone. Um, so this been uh, this week we have been talking about the uh, pricing water, and uh, in the previous session we did discuss about the setting of water tariffs. So uh, what we are going to talk uh, now is about the different water tariff models. Okay, what are the different structures or what are the different schemes to set the water tariff? So uh, there are quite a, a few well accepted water tariff schemes which uh, sort of uh, includes the fixed charge or flat rate systems or uniform volumetric tariff, increasing block or decreasing block tariff or uh, two part or seasonal tariffs or a combination of these can also be used at times. So, we are uh, what we, we are going to talk about these one by one. So, to start with, uh, there is a system for pricing water which works based on the fixed or flat charge. Okay. So, it is a very simple system, it uh, straight away charges a constant fee regardless of whatever volume is being consumed or whatever volume is being used. Okay. So, the consumer pays a fixed monthly water bills which is the same independently of the uh, amount or um, of the water consumed. Okay. Now, if you see, so uh, whatever water is being consumed, uh, whatever scale of water is being consumed, there is no increase in the price. The price is more, uh, price is fixed. So, this is uh, one of the more, one of the very common systems or one of the very common setups particularly in uh, India and many other places in fact, okay. it, uh, it is priced that way. The charges may vary according to specific factors such as connection size or uh, connection type or consumer type. So, based on those aspects the charges could be vary, but it is not dependent on the consumption pattern. So, uh, particularly when there is no metering system available, okay, this is the only option that one gets for pricing water. Because uh, if you do not have a metering system, uh, in the previous session we were discussing that uh, in the most of uh, households across the country, we do not have water meters installed. So, when you do not have water meters installed, how you are going to uh, pay for a known consumption because the consumption itself is not known. So, when the consumption is not known at the first place, you cannot go for any tariff structure which is consumption based. And in the absence of the metering system or in the absence of the quantification of the consumption of water from households, a fixed water charge or a flat rate is the only possible tariff structure and that is why it is very common in many parts of the world. Okay. It is not only in India, but uh, in many other parts of the world as well. Uh, this fixed water charges are com commonly found in countries where water has historically been abundant and uh, hence metering was not needed to give people a a sort of incentive for reducing their consumption okay. because you meter a quantity only when there is some sort of indication that okay, you want to know how much you are consuming, can it be reduced or uh, all those aspect will only matter when there is something is in the uh, like not abundant quantity. Since water at many places are in plenty, people do not uh, talk much about the saving water. And when they do not talk about the saving water or when they do not interested in how much water they are uh, spending or how much water they are wasting, they are not very inclined towards the metering water. Okay. They are not very inclined towards the metering the consumption of water and when one is not metering the water consumption, uh, you have no other option but either not to charge anything or to charge a fixed rate or a flat price. 
So, these fixed charges are still quite widely used in several industrialized countries also including Canada, Norway and uh, uh, United Kingdom. In India, uh, it is uh, very common okay, mo, uh, many parts uh, many most of the cities in India actually uh, we either do not pay. In fact, not paying can also be considered in a way as a fixed charge where charge is 0. Okay. So, it is as good as that. So, we are not paying or paying a, a flat or fixed charge uh, at, um, for water consumption. Okay. Now, if you see what is the criteria for setting uh, the fixed charge. Okay. When we let us say we do not have a what a metered system, we have to go for fixed charge only. So, what how we should basically assign a fixed charge, what what are what is going to be the criteria. So, uh, criteria could be income based or ability to pay based. Okay. So, higher fixed charges are set on valuable residential properties on assumption that people uh, could have higher income and would be willing to pay more for water okay. and uh, with the sort of larger or uh, well equipped houses their consumption is also likely to be more even after unmetered, even after it is not metered, but one can get an idea of the consumption pattern as well. Okay. So, those people whose income are higher uh, they typically have a greater ability to pay. So, for uh, these reasons uh, income based fixed charges or income means uh, that depends on the society or that depends on several other aspect it can be reflected in those. So, uh, a fixed charges could be uh, fixed based on that. For the same reason it is common to assign commercial entities a different fixed charge than a household. Okay. So, because household consumption are for the basic essential needs. So, that is charged at a lower fixed rate while the commercial is a basically profit making entity. So, they are charged at a higher fixed rate even, after, even if they are unmetered. The another criteria could be the diameter of pipe connecting to the distribution system. So, household uh, which generally require less amount of water would be connected with a, a sort of smaller bore okay, or smaller pipe dia the uh, larger entities business hospitals or industries will commonly uh, sort of uh, have uh, larger ferules okay, or larger bores larger uh, larger dia pipes for meeting their water demands so uh, they can be set a higher fixed charge because smaller dia pipe means or uh, smaller bore means your consumption is also likely to be proportionally smaller Whereas, a, a larger pipe size or larger uh, dia setups are an indicative of the higher consumption as well. So, uh, based on this size as well the uh, charges can be adjusted. Okay. So, it is not that the charges are going to be uniform across all customers as we, uh, as we have been seeing it could be it could not be. So, uh, charges could be vary based on the customer characteristics okay, or based on the consumption characteristics, but it is not going to be based on the volume of the consumption. Because volume of consumption is not metered, even if it is metered in a fixed system when you say that okay, we are going to charge you let us say this much of uh, uh, money per month, it is going to be that and that is what is happens in most of, most of the cities in India. Some people pay uh, 50 rupees a month, 100 rupees a month, 200 rupees a month, 300 rupees a month. So, that sort of prices are paid for water. Okay. It is not that uh, it actually uh, accounts uh, quantitative estimation of that. There are certain advantage of uh, fixed charges or flat rates. The advantages are that it does not need a metering system. Okay, because uh, since you are charging at a flat rate the you are not interested or one does not require the amount of consumption done at a at, uh, individual specific connection be it a household or industry. Okay. It, is, it is easy to administer because uh, 
the charges are fixed for everyone, so uh, fairly easy. It ensures affordability of services uh, if uh, sort of differentiated by the ability of pay because charges can be accordingly uh, established and it can provide a stable cash flow if set at an appropriate level. Now, this is a misleading idea that a fixed charge or a flat tariff system cannot be uh, sort of sustainable in short. Of course, it cannot be sustainable in long term, it needs substantial revisions that way. But in short terms, if you see particularly let us say I want to recover my ONM cost, I just see that okay, this is my total ONM cost uh, uh, per annum and I need to recover this money, I see this, these are the number of connections okay, or uh, let us say n number of connection, n1 number of connections are with uh, certain dia while n2 number of connections are with certain other dia. So, I can actually fix a charge, a flat charge that okay, uh, I need to collect this uh, let us say uh, a flat price of 200 rupees per month from these households, a flat price of three, 350 rupees from these household, a flat price of uh, let us say uh, 3000 rupees from these larger business entities or commercial establishment or in uh, uh, sort of companies, factories. So, that would give me the total recovery. So, in a smaller setup, in a smaller uh, time frame, even the fixed water tariff could eventually be sustainable, okay. at times uh, could be justifiable also if you are going income based and if you see that okay, uh, if for metering purpose how much resource, uh, how much further financial resources would be needed if, if you want in order to avoid that if you can get it done uh, by just putting a fixed charges and people have that willingness to pay in that way. So, even that can be uh, uh, wonderful, it could be uh, workable uh, solution. However, the there are associated disadvantages that it does not give a signal of the real cost of providing water and sanitation services. So, in a fixed uh, charge model, in a fixed rate model, in a flat rate model, one will not know that uh, what is the real cost of water and sanitation services and uh, since it is not providing any incentive, it will not lead or it will not encourage the people to reduce their water consumption because uh, in order to reduce that water consumption, if there is certain incentive like uh, in the, if I reduce my water consumption, I will have to pay less for my water fees. So, those sort of, uh, those sort of uh, incentives could help in reducing the water consumption, which typically is missing in the uh, fixed charge systems. Water might be sold at high prices to the household with no access of water. That is one more disadvantage that uh, if let us say certain households are not connected with the water, okay, uh, people or uh, some a particular section of community or particular people may actually take undue advantage by uh, filling because they are not uh, they need not to pay any extra for more water. So, they can fill more water and sell that water to the uh, households where there is no water available or there is no, uh, th uh, those households which are not connected to the water services. So, if they are not connected to the water services, it, uh, they can basically sort of sell that water in unfair way of course. Okay. Uh, further, it is not possible to know the exact level of uh, water consumption because they are not metered. So, that is uh, the consumption pattern or consumption level would also be not known in such a system. And in long run, fixed charges do not guarantee revenue for future services. Hence, uh, the uh, li like communities could face the poor level of services because uh, if the charges are fixed in a long run, if you are uh, not generating the sub, uh, subsequent revenues, 
it can be done in fact if you revise your fixed charges from time to time and uh, you in count you sort of corresponds to uh, incorporate the different expenses or the likely uh, likely addition in the infrastructure or infrastructure improvement or enhancing the services so what are likely expended in expenditures uh, likely to occur in uh, such setups if those are uh, considered one can actually get a get a revenue generated as well from fixed charge systems but because uh, the flat prices does not increase that way uh, is, are not increased frequently or are not generally uh, generally decided based on the overall recovery or overall uh, uh, sustainable financial sustainability of the system so that way in long run uh, if you do not end up having a significant uh, pool for further expansion or further uh, improvement in the uh, improvement in the water services you are, uh, the society may end up uh, facing the poor level of services as well. So, that is kind of a risk associated it is not certainly that it is going to happen, but uh, this could happen that is uh, that is a very common risk associated with the uh, flat rate uh, setups. So, fixed charge or flat rate setups uh, if you see an example here is from the city of Raipur of course, this data is little older uh, in 2000. 9. So, uh, that is uh, in 2009 how it was uh, priced in Raipur. So, based on the size of connection the domestic connections were of size of 5 inches uh, 0.5 uh, inches were priced 2 rupees per day. Okay. So, 2 rupees per day price means monthly almost 60 rupees. 60 rupees per month or annually we, if we say that we have 365 days. So, almost around 730 rupees uh, per annum. Okay. So, that was the annual price for water paid by the domestic uh, consumers in the Raipur. Okay. 60 rupees per month very low. For the same size of the connection 1.3 centimeters connection size 0.5 inches the commercial price for commercial establishment was close to 5 rupees. Okay. So, 4.9 uh, rupees okay. uh, that way if you see this turn out to be uh, some uh, close to approximately around 150 rupees per month. Okay. So, uh, almost uh, more than two fold okay. and further based on the increasing sizes increasing uh, size of the connection because uh, the larger the connection size the larger is expected to be the consumption of water you can see that the uh, per day charges were also increased in proportion. Okay. So, uh, no, that way uh, the pricing structure was done at uh, Raipur okay. and it is a it is a very clear example of how the fixed or flat charges are deployed. There could be further uh, further arguments that the domestic connections all the domestic connections are uh, priced at a fixed rate of 2 rupees. Uh, in in a further revised setup or revised system it could be made uh, based on the uh, based on the type of domestic connection as well. So, for example, for uh, poor people or uh, for uh, people with low income group people you could give a similar dia connection at lesser price as compared to the people from well to do societies or well to do sections. Okay, or higher income group sections or from those societies. So, those kind of uh, amendments possibility is there, but uh, as an example case this is how the uh, a fixed charge or a flat rate system works. Okay. 
So, uh, moving towards the uh, next model okay, which is the uniform tariff system okay, uh, which charges the consumers based on their uh, water consumption. Okay. So, uh, post the uh, fixed tariff model all other models that will be discussed will incorporate the uh, concept of how much water is being consumed by a customer. Okay. In absence of the water consumption data the flat rate is the only option. Okay. Now, uh, the uniform tariff is basically uh, sort of a uniform volumetric charge or a constant volumetric charge where all units are priced the same uh, price, uh, same tariff independent of their uses and customer pay proportionally to their water consumption. So, it is the simplest way of pricing based on a consumer uh, customer's level of use, okay, charging customers according to a fixed amount per unit of water consumed. The unit price for water does not change within a customer class. Of course, here also you can have a different customer classes like uh, we have just been uh, just saw an example that domestic customers are charged at a different rate and uh, commercial customers are charged at a different rate. So, that concept would carry on for all the pricing models, but uh, for within a customer class the price here unit price does not change within a customer class. So, the total price of water increases as a customer use additional units of water. Okay. Here in the uniform tariff system the rate is uniform, the rate is fixed, but the total amount will change based on the quantity consumed. Okay. So, uh, that can be seen from uh, these couple of graphs here. So, if you see the total water consumption with the whatsoever total water consumption increasing over here, we do not see any change in the unit price of the water. So, this is price per unit consumption, so price per unit consumption is stable, it is not going to change okay. and this translates in a total price like this. So, your water consumption is increasing okay. and uh, because your price per unit consumption is fixed, so the total price you will pay will actually increase linearly with the consumption rate. So, that is what uniform tariff is and uh, this is uh, another sort of uh, uh, popular model, another uh, very much used model okay, for pricing water. The rate, uniform tariff rate sends a price signal to the customer because the water bill will vary by the uses which is uh, which is not there in the earlier uh, fixed uh, rate system. Okay. The prerequisite involves for this that all the connection should actually be metered. Okay. So, uh, for such a system one needs to meter the water system and when you have a consumption data available then only the this kind of uh, model can be employed. The constant volumetric tariff can be designed as a single tariff or a, a combined two part tariff with a fixed charge. Okay. So, how this uh, fixed charge and single tariff system will work will actually be like if you are having a two part tariff which eventually we will, dis uh, we will discuss later also. But, uh, but like, uh, like the one that is being seen here, so uh, this is you can if it is being passing through 0, so no water consumption, no price is your uh, simple uniform tariff. However, one can have actually a uniform tariff system like this that this much is the basic would be fixed rate would be charged. Okay. 
this is the fixed rate would be charged from every customer let us say be 20 rupees or 50 rupees or whatsoever rupees okay. and post that whatever uses will actually be charged according to the consumption. So, those kind of uh, those kind of models those kind of setups can uh, be used in the uh, price in the pricing. Now, this the signal that it sends this uh, sort of uniform volumetric rate uh, it sends a signal that the unit price for water if, if it is low it sends that there is uh, not much need of water conservation. Of course, uh, if you compare with a flat rate system there is a stronger signal of water conservation because you consume less you pay less. But if the prices are low, if the prices are low that means you are not bothered that much about the uh, conservation. But if prices are high this rather sen sen uh, sends a stronger signal, but at the same time it potentially risks the affordability aspect as well. So, with higher tariff your uh, uh, higher uniform tariff the system or the uh, services may not be affordable to uh, sort of low income groups. Okay. So, the unit price for water can also be changed throughout the year. Okay. So, this will this annual variation uh, in water cost by applying a higher price per unit of water could be used in certain times when there is a water availability reduces like in summer months. So, uh, one can see that summer months the water will be charged at a higher uniform rate. Okay. So, uh, then it is uh, sort of you will see two different curves uh, or two different price slabs although both uniform, but uh, let us say one can have that uh, okay, from uh, for example, from July to uh, let us say uh, February or July to March the prices will be uh, prices will be uh, so say let us say 20 rupees per kiloliter while from March or from April to uh, the uh, from April to June or April to uh, this for the summer months the prices are going to be 30 rupees per kiloliter. So, that kind of uh, system can be uh, adopted which sends the uh, although uniform rate, but uh, different price signals. Uh, the advantages are obvious it in uh, basically ensure social equity ok, uh, it is easy to understand for customers people pay according to how much they have used ok. It is like uh, simple market strategy how much you consume you pay for that at a fixed unit rate. Okay. It ensures economic efficiency if set at a near marginal cost of water, uh, revenue adjusts automatically to uh, changing consumption. So, uh, more consumption more revenue, uh, process of uh, tariff revision is again simple because you need to see how much you need to increase a uh, simple and the increment in the price. Okay. And uh, people can limit their bill by reducing consumption. So, that, that sort of water conservation uh, signal is also uh, inferred. While disadvantage actually it needs metering system which is expensive and institutions uh, sort of that needs a lot of water will have a high water bill because uh, the prices are fixed okay, and a more consumption will incur more uh, water charges. Nationally coherent strategy is necessary when applying this type of charging in order to say that whether it is uh, fulfilling the affordability aspect or not. Okay. So, that affordability criteria needs to be ensured while uh, putting a uniform tariff rate okay. and uh, more so ever uh, it needs to be seen that uh, the services are uh, services can be borne by the lower income group as well. So, um, 
this is uh, that is all about the uniform tariff uh, model and uh, we will discuss the uh, few more models as uh, the block tariffs particularly in the next session. Thank you.